Hey, thanks for checking out this video. I wanted to break down the new Infusionsoft email builder and give you my two cents about it. So the first thing to point out is that the new email builder is only available for building broadcasts right now. So if you go to the campaign builder and you build an email there, you will still experience the same drag and drop builder you've been using for a couple years now. Uh, but if you navigate to underneath marketing, the email and broadcast section, you should see this new option to take the new email builder for a spin. And this is a mobile responsive email builder. So already it is uh, superior to emails that the broadcast builder was capable of creating in the past just by that one feature alone. Now, I recognize it's 2016 and uh, Infusionsoft is a little bit behind the eight ball on creating a mobile responsive email builder, uh, but it's there now. It should be in your application as of today um, or yesterday, depending on uh, when your app got the most recent release. So let's go ahead and click on take the new email builder for a spin, and I will show you what the experience look like, looks like and what my favorite parts are, and maybe a few of the things that I think uh, could use some refining. So the first thing you'll notice is that they give you a library of actual templates, right? So I'm not talking about marketing templates uh, from your template library that you've built and collected. These are templates that Infusionsoft has created that you can just grab and modify and then deploy. So I've been training Infusionsoft customers for a while and this was a common sentiment that people wanted uh, standard templates that they could just swap out with their own content. And Infusionsoft integrated with a few different tools to try and make that happen and it just never really stuck. So now they've given you uh, what appears to be 12 or, or so email templates that you can click on and you can choose to use or you can preview right from here to see how it's gonna look both uh, in the inbox as well as on a mobile device. So that's nice that it gives you that type of uh, clarity so you can see what your recipients will be experiencing. If you wanna grab one of these templates, you would just click use template. Or if you have already sent emails, so I'm talking about a few months or weeks down the road, you can click on previous emails, you can grab one that you've sent out, or you can click on drafts and you can see emails that you've started, emails that you've played with, and then you can click continue, or you can preview right from there, or you can trash them. So let's go ahead over here to templates and let's grab one of these and we'll click use this template. So the next screen is uh, very similar to our wizard that we used previously where you add a subject line. So here you go. And then you choose your list of recipients. And you can choose your recipients in one of a couple of ways. You can either perform a brand new search here and just set up your criteria and filter through and find a subset of your contacts. Uh, just to be clear, it doesn't allow you to search um, using a different type of record. So you can't do an opportunity search or a referral partner search or an order search here. Um, but you can pretty easily uh, type in the name of one of your saved searches or the name of one of your tags. And this does support allowing multiple. So you can choose additional lists and you can just kind of pile them up. Um, what I would like to see is the ability to say, cool, I want this list and then uh, you know choose a second list and say, but I don't want this list. So right now it's just inclusionary logic. Any, uh, um, any searches you add, it will include. But in the future, I'd love to see it perform kind of the way Facebook ads does that says, hey, I want this audience, but I wanna exclude anyone who's also part of this audience. So maybe that'll come down the line. Once we've created our list and our subject line and chosen uh, the email address you want this sent from, you can down here, go ahead and click next and it'll take you to the environment where we actually build the email. So the way we used to use snippets in your drag and drop builder, uh, they've replaced that concept with something called blocks. And what I wanna point out is that they've, uh, in my opinion, uh, very wisely moved all of the building tools over here to the left-hand side. So previously when you were building emails, right, the snippets and the formatting options were all up along the top and it just pushed down all of the email content. So it made it really difficult to see the email you were building because there was so much space for the from address, the subject line, uh, the snippets, all of the different formatting options were all right up top. So now they've moved that over to the side to give us more room on the um, actual email pane to interact with our content. So uh, on the design tab, you've got a few different options, right? So there is three different size uh, formats 
right? So you've got your header one, right? Your first style. Uh, and then you've got your paragraph and there is a header two. So you could see heading one style, heading two style, and then normal text. So you can adjust those over here, including uh, a so extended number of fonts that are now supported. And you can also adjust the size. And anywhere in the email that you've selected that particular style, it'll update in real time. So if I choose to change this to uh, the screen here, well, all of the peop all of the fonts or all of the uh, text that I've set to heading one uh, will automatically update to that green as well. Same thing for heading two and normal text. If you adjust that size, it keeps everything in your email that is set to that particular size very uniform, which is a nice way to standardize that. I know that with the different snippets, the different paragraphs and text blocks that we used previously, uh, that was kind of a common uh, disconnect for people was if you changed it somewhere, it didn't always adjust everywhere and it's got kind of wonky in terms of not retaining its own formatting. So now that's all handled from one central area. Same thing for your link style. So you can give your link a color right here and you can select right from your color picker or you can pick from something on the screen, right? So that's the way that this panel over here works. Um, one thing that I wish it did, uh, I said I was gonna give you a few of those, is I don't have the opportunity for this particular color to add a hex code, right? So I have to kind of figure it out or choose from an image. And uh, if you don't have the color you want right on this color wheel, right? You got a couple of other options here for the grayscale slider uh, for, you know, hard-coded colors here from a specific color set or um, on a spectrum you can choose from within this uh, range. And then finally, uh, you got some crayons. So you can choose a specific crayon and watch it update in real time over in all of the uh, elements that match that particular setting. So, um, but down here, I really like that I can just pop in my brand color. So if I know what my hex code is, I can make sure that it's a spot on match. And then the email background color down here is something that you get to adjust as well by adding a hex code or choosing from the color. And you can see that affects uh, the area surrounding the email there. So let's do something like that. Um, so the color and style I think is pretty straightforward. Most of you guys can figure that out on your own. Uh, let's talk about the different blocks. So we still build our emails with blocks the way that you would use snippets previously. You just have a little bit of different functionality now. So text snippet, spacer, and divider, those are all things you should be familiar with. Uh, image is familiar as well. It still allows you to add an image to the email, but button is brand new. So if you wanna add a button, right? And this is not an image-based button, it's an HTML code button, so it allows you to dynamically resize it to add uh, context here. So if I make this shorter, right, something, uh, it'll actually adjust the width of the button to my, uh, the length of my call to action, right? And that's nice because uh, it'll render uh, regardless of whether or not the recipient has their images enabled. So you can change the button text style, you can change the background color of that button, and you can add a link. Of course, that link should be wherever that call to action is directing them. So let's put in www.shoppingcart.com, and then you can add a tag. So this allows you to add one of your existing tags, right, uh, to that particular button right there. So let's see, uh, new tag, right? So it doesn't allow me to create a new tag on the fly. Um, and it also doesn't allow me to easily search through my tags. So I would expect uh, that I could type in a, you know, a set of letters or characters and it would filter through this list. So that's something I would love to see them improve on is the ability for me to add a tag right here, as well as uh, easily search through my tags. So I think there's a small opportunity for them to improve that feature. But overall, it gives me the capacity to add a tag, which then I can use to trigger um, automation. So that's nice. Let's see. So one thing that I've noticed that's kind of stuck out to me that you may pick up on as well is there's no real need to save, right? If you notice right up here, it's auto saving as I build my email. But I get kind of anxious when I just add a link just clicking this back button right? So just trust that any links you add will add. I, I personally gravitate toward like a save button, something that I can press, um, but you're just going to have to get used to uh, just pressing back and knowing that that link has been stored. So the content of the email, you can easily drag around as with before and drop into new areas. The big difference that I think people are going to love is uh, you can now drag this uh, below 
or parallel to something. So if I wanna have these two sections side by side, I just slip it into position there, right? And down here, if I wanted to have this one uh, on either side of this image, right? Well, I can just easily drag that down as well. So as you're introducing new elements, right, you can create a one column email for this section, a three column email for this section, and then a one column email down here. So that's the type of flexibility that Infusionsoft's email builder has never had before. You could either have a two column or a one column email and that was it. But the beauty of something like this is once we preview it, it shows us not only how it's gonna look on desktop, but it also shows you how those three side-by-sides are gonna appear, right, just like that, on a mobile. So it stacks those intelligently, knowing that left to right, the content should be displayed in that order in the event that it can't be displayed side-by-side. So I really like that preview feature. I really like how easy it is to move things around, uh, to drag them and adjust them um, using the uh, interface over here. So moving along with our snippets here, we talked about the button. I also like the new social snippets that they've given us access to. So let's drop those right in there. So one thing you'll note is that the new social snippet goes well beyond just having Facebook and Twitter. Uh, you've also got Pinterest and Instagram and um, of course Google Plus and YouTube and uh, LinkedIn. So you've got access to all of these channels. Now, the way I understand it is that this is just giving you an icon for each of those channels and it's up to you to uh, populate the link for your specific channel. Of course, I think this is just a link. So you really could use whatever you wanted behind these different logos for those various channels. Now, in most cases, you're just gonna send them to your page. But on a specific email, you might choose to use the Twitter link to pre-populate a tweet for them to send out. Or use the Facebook link to pre-populate a post to share a specific link. So there might be some creative application for how you use this social widget. If you're looking for a tool for something like that, I recommend sharelinkgenerator.com. Go ahead and check that out and maybe bookmark it as a tool you can leverage to help increase social engagement. So now that I've added those, let's go ahead and adjust the icon size, right? And then let's uh, maybe align it to the left and we'll go back. Again, I'm reaching for a save button, but it's just not there, so no sweat. Let's align this to the left as well. Um, and then we got group, which is the only other new icon or, or block rather. So let's go ahead and add a group. And as you may guess, it pretty much just lumps together an image, some text and a button. And you can decide if you wanna hide one of those pieces over here. Uh, so we can hide the text and just have a button and an image. The reason I like that is because it packages them together. So now if I decide to put something else next to it, right? Slap a paragraph on the side. Well, it keeps those uh, formatted the same, right? So if you built an image and a, text, a button side by side and then you put a paragraph next to it, it wouldn't necessarily keep the button aligned with that. So by using a group, it kind of lumps those together and they adjust um, as one item or as one package instead of independently. Now, uh, one of the last couple features that I wanna go over is actually uh, our images. So historically, we've always been able to upload images and Infusionsoft hosts them for you, and that's still the case. But one thing that I'm really excited about is we now have the ability to edit those images. So if you update or upload an image, you can easily crop or add specific overlays, right, to make the image a certain shape. So if you wanted to add, um, for example, uh, a circular uh, headshot, right? Well, all you have to do is drop it in here, choose the right overlay, click save, and now that image has been updated to reflect the changes you just made. It doesn't actually change the image file itself. So long-term, I suspect they'll give us the ability to save this new image, but just for this instance, for this email, we've now got a circular image. Right, And that can be really, really useful if you need to not only add overlays, but enhance pictures, add frames, put text on top of it, right? There's all sorts of images or, or editing options for your images lined out right here. And now they're all available directly within this broadcast builder. So to me, that in itself is a massive step in the right direction, right? Personally, I've always used 
Pixlr as my uh, photo editor. Pixlr is what I use. It's an online free photo uh, editing tool. I love that it's hosted. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, but it'll be a lot easier to just upload whatever images I want to use and then just, you know, navigate through these different options and make it look how I need it to look. So I really like the way that they've given us the ability to um, adapt or, or edit our creative collateral as we're building our broadcast. That's going to make my life a little bit easier and hopefully yours as well. Um, you can make the images clickable, you can add tags, you can add an alt uh, description as with before, but that's about the size of things. Um, let's go right back here to our blocks. The last block is our video snippet, so let's go ahead and add that. And what it's looking for is a URL from Wistia, YouTube, or Vimeo. So um, in the past, you could use the YouTube snippet. Uh, which was a little bit clunky and not super flexible, or you could take a screenshot of the video and then you could make that an image and then you could take that image and you could make it a link. Uh, so this makes things a little bit easier just by allowing you to paste in the URL directly from Wistia, YouTube, or Vimeo. And of course, adding a link or a tag if they click on it and then adjusting the size right down here. So I like the ability that they've given us with the, the video snippet. I think that's a little bit more flexible than it was previously. Um, but that's it for the blocks. So you may notice that there were a couple of blocks previously that you had access to that are no longer there. Uh, the first one that I, I notice is the uh, snippet, right, or the signature snippet. So I don't see a signature snippet, which is a little disappointing because uh, I use that a lot, um, but it's something that's not uber critical. I can write out my signature each time or create an image of my signature and use that. But I also don't see an HTML snippet. So that may not matter to you, but if you were the type of person who made more uh, technical use of that particular tool, uh, then it could be a big deal that you don't have an HTML snippet. If that is a deal breaker, you know I would encourage you to vocalize the things you think are missing from this builder to Infusionsoft. Uh, I know they're working actively on being able to support it in the campaign builder environment, but I'm sure they would welcome whatever feedback you have about using this broadcast builder before they implement it on a broader scale. So that's about the size of things for the new email builder. As you can see, uh, it's a big step in the right direction. There's a lot of features I'm really excited about. There might be a little bit of a learning curve as it comes to transitioning from the old builder and adopting some of the new uh, functionality and just the layout or the landscape that the builder has now. But I think that as you get used to it, you'll find that it's much easier to use. Um, and of course, the responsive emails is a, is a no-brainer in terms of a reason to start adopting this right away. The process of sending it should be pretty much identical. When you click to the next page, it's going to verify you have a subject line, a from address, your recipients, and your spam score. Uh, you could schedule it to be sent in the future. Or you can jump back to one of these. You could send yourself a test, which I always recommend. You can preview it, or you can save and exit. And then finally, when you're ready, you go ahead and click send. So that queues it up and does the, the broadcast processing just like we've seen in the past. And then once it has sent, you'll have your reporting statistics. So that's the new email builder from Infusionsoft. In my opinion, um, they did a lot of things right. I'd love to give Infusionsoft tons of credit and the team that works specifically on this for all of their hard work. Uh, as I outlined, I think there are maybe a couple of, of drawbacks, a couple of hitches or things that they uh, still have to work on, but I trust that they're uh, aware of that and they're, they're open and receptive to feedback, and I'm sure that they'll improve that over time. So uh, good luck, and if you have questions about this builder or if you think I missed anything specific, I'd love to hear about it. Cheers.